Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining today's discussion. We'll be talking about a common symptom of chronic kidney disease, itchy skin. As a reminder, today's event will also be streaming on Facebook Live and YouTube. My name is Ryan Woolley, and I'm the Director of Public Education here at the American Kidney Fund. Puritis is the medical term for itchy skin, which is a common symptom for people living with chronic kidney disease, especially people on dialysis. This constant feeling of itchy skin that is not relieved by scratching can be very distressing. And over time, it can affect your mental health and lead to feelings of stress, depression, and anxiety. Here at AKF, we recently launched a new campaign with education information to help people with chronic kidney disease associated puritis better understand this condition. And today's webinar is part of that educational campaign. We're excited to be joined by a guest expert who will share more information about itchy skin and answer your questions. And today's education content is made possible by CSL V4. All right, and before I introduce you to our guest for today, I wanna to go over a few housekeeping items. So this event is being live streamed on Zoom and Facebook and YouTube. And if you're watching live, we encourage you to join the conversation. Let us know you're here in the comment section and type any questions you have in our Q&A feature on Zoom or in the comment section on Facebook. The end of the um, webinar today, we'll try to get to as many questions that we have. And at the very end, we'll also include a link to a brief satisfaction survey in our chat. If you're on Zoom, you can also see this pop up in your web browser, just click continue to get to that webinar survey. Um, and we just kindly ask that you answer the survey for us and our, your honest feedback will help us continue to make our programs the best that they can be. And finally, if you're a health professional and believe that your accrediting body may offer you credits for attending this webinar, simply email us at education at kidneyfund.org. While this webinar is not accredited, we'll be happy to send you a certificate of attendance after today's session. Also, please note that this webinar is be re being recorded and the recording will be available afterwards. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce you to our speaker. I'm excited to be joined by Dr. Shayan Sirazian. Dr. Sirazian received his undergraduate and medical degrees from Brown University and did his internal medicine residency and nephrology fellowship at the Columbia University Irving Medical Center. He spent seven years at NYU Winthrop Hospital where he was the fellowship program director and the director of nephrology clinical trials before being recruited back to Columbia. Dr. Sirazian is currently an associate professor of medicine and nephrology and a director of home dialysis at Columbia University Medical Center. His research aims to test and implement interventions to improve quality of life and self-care in patients with chronic kidney disease or end-stage kidney disease. To this end, he has been the investigator on several studies that have examined the treatment of CKD-associated puritis in patients with end-stage kidney disease. Dr. Strazian, please go ahead and say hello to our listeners. Hello, Brian. Uh, thanks for having me. Thank you for the nice introduction. I'm very excited to be talking about a topic that I have a real genuine clinical and research interest in, and I hope to elucidate the audience on some of the um, characteristics of this issue. Great. Thank you so much for doing, joining us today. Thank you. All right, we'll go ahead and get started with your presentation, and then we'll save some time at the end for a Q&A for our listeners. Okay. Okay, so for today's talk, I'm going to be talking about chronic kidney disease associated paritis. It has many different names. I'll start by defining it. Uh, it's otherwise known as itchy skin. And then I'm going to go into some of the clinical characteristics of itchy skin. How will you know if you have itchy skin? Uh, what are some of the characteristics? I'll go into some of the causes of itchy skin. I'll go into some of the health problems that can cause itchy, itchy skin, particularly with a focus on kidney disease. We'll go into a brief, briefly about how itchy skin is treated. And then finally, we'll end with what should I do if I have itchy skin?
Okay, so let's start by defining itchy skin. So it's medically known as chronic kidney disease associated pruritus, and it was previously known as uremic pruritus. It's also known as kidney itch to make it simple. And it's defined as itchy skin in patients with advanced chronic kidney disease or end-stage kidney disease without another clear identifiable alternative source of itch. And those alternative sources are usually a recognizable skin condition or a liver condition. Now remember, itchy skin is not a disease itself, it's a symptom and it's often caused by a systemic illness, which we'll get into. Symptoms can be acute when they last less than six weeks, or they can be chronic when they're over six weeks. And as uh, healthcare professionals, we're particularly interested in the chronic causes of itch and how to treat it. Um, as I said, itchy skin can be caused by primary skin diseases or by other systemic diseases. And these are diseases that affect the whole body rather than a single organ or body part. And some examples of systemic causes of kidney itch, well, of itch, are kidney disease, uh, otherwise known as kidney itch, liver disease, hematologic disease, and other systemic diseases. And finally, itchy skin is really common, and I'll get into how common it is for patients with chronic kidney disease-associated pruritus. Okay, so as we said, kidney itch is common, and how common is it? So this is a figure from a study that was done of many different dialysis centers that in many different countries. So this includes over 18,000 patients from over 20 countries worldwide. Um, there were different iterations of this study, that is different years where they did the survey. And basically the survey asked in the following four weeks, how itchy was your skin? And how, how often did that itchy skin affect your day-to-day -day life? And you could choose not at all, somewhat, moderately, very much, or extremely. And it was found that in the most recent sampling of this survey, 68% of patients on dialysis had any degree of itch. So almost uh, over two-thirds of patients. And 37% had at least moderately itchy skin. And these numbers have been pretty stable over the years, maybe a little bit better than it was 15 to 20 years ago, um, but also pretty constant internationally across countries and across different dialysis centers. Okay, so now that we know it's, it's common, how do you know if you have this kidney itch? Um, so the, the unfortunate thing about it is that it, there's no one clinical profile that characterizes kidney itch. It's different for everyone. Um, and it can be different in the quality. It can feel like, you know, very uncomfortable or very mild. Um, you could be scratching all day or you could just have a scratch here and there. Um, it can occur at any time in relation to dialysis. So that, it, that is, it can occur either before dialysis, during dialysis, or after dialysis. Um, and there are different um, exacerbating and remitting factors for everyone. So unfortunately, it's highly variable in, term, in terms of how it presents, and it can be different for, any, for everybody. But I want to stress one point, and that's, if you're on dialysis and you're itching, if there's not a clear alternative cause, it's probably chronic kidney disease associated pruritus. Um, so again, the itch, the characteristics can be variable. It can be an itchy feeling that's uncomfortable prickling or crawling under your skin. That's probably the most common description. Uh, it may be constant. It may be always there or it may come and go. Um, it creates an urge to scratch, but it's not completely relieved by scratching. So the scratching can actually cause this vicious cycle where you scratch and that causes more itch and it can cause skin problems. And then, you know, you just keep scratching. And so what we see generally, chronic kidney disease associated pruritus should not give you much on skin exam. Actually, there should, really should be no findings because it's just the itch. But because of the itching, you can see superimposed complications. That, that is, you can see signs of the itching. So there can be patches of skin that are itchy, raw. Um, you can have dry skin with the chronic kidney disease associated pruritus. And if you itch constantly, the skin can become discolored. Um, and I'll show you some pictures of that. Again, the itching can happen at any time, but some, some descriptions of this problem show that the itching can be worse at night, which causes poor sleep. 
It can be worse in hot weather, potentially from the drying effects and, um, you know, giving you more dry skin or xerosis, as we call it. Um, and when you feel stressed, that can increase the inflammation in your body, uh, and that also can worsen your itching. Okay, so these are pictures from a great review that was done in Kidney International in 2015, and they show some of the problems associated with scratching. Now, these are complications of scratching, you know, of itching that itchy skin. Um, and they're not what you see in chronic kidney disease associated pruritus. Generally, there's nothing on skin exam. But you can see these complications, and those are scratch marks there on the left on your lower leg. You can see these nodules on the forearm of per, they're called perigo nodularis. You can see these deep scars and perigo nodules on your shoulders and back, as you see here in the female patient on the right. And that discolored skin is just some signs of a scarring in the skin from constantly uh, itching. Um, so these are really extreme examples of what you may see in chronic kidney disease associated pruritus. Generally, you don't see much. Okay, oh, go back one there. So as I said, there's no one clinical profile that characterizes patients with chronic kidney disease associated pruritus. It used to be thought that it was this systemic, um, uh, systematic condition that would affect both sides of your body. Um, but actually, that has not been shown to be the case. So, so only about half of patients will it affect both sides of the body. Um, and it can be localized. It can be um, localized. That means in one particular spot. And if it is localized, it's generally localized to your face, shunt, arm, and back. So if you look at this distribution figure here, um, you see that it can be basically anywhere. Um, and it can be symmetric or it can be localized. Okay. So let's get into some of the causes of itchy skin. Now, uh, uh, just a, a caveat here, we don't know exactly what causes chronic kidney disease associated pruritus. We have theories. Um, and these theories are not completely well um, um, characterized theories. They're just basically thoughts. Um, we do think that it's multifactorial. We think that it's probably a combination of things that are occurring at the same time that causes this kidney itch. Um, you know, initially when they when they start to start to characterize this problem, uh, researchers thought it was related to not having enough dialysis. Um, and I think to a certain degree that might be the case. That is, if you're being under dialyzed, you know, you may get itchy skin. Um, but then once you get up to an adequate level of dialysis, you can't explain the itchy skin on under dialysis. And generally, most people in the U.S., over 98% are dialyzed appropriately. So if you're in that 1% that's not, it's possible that um, your itchy skin is related to under dialysis. I think, you know, one of the really um, hot theories these days is that inflammation in your body is what causes itching. And that can be the case. And, and th there's research, active research going into that theory. And as we know, patients on dialysis have more inflammation in their body, and that may cause itching. Um, it is also thought that the inflammation um, it, it also is related to um, an imbalance potentially in your opioid uh, system in the body, where you have um, an overactivation of one opioid system and an underactivation of another, and that may cause itching. And some of the recent um, uh, medicines have targeted that, that um, over and under activation. Dry skin is often present when you have chronic kidney disease associated pruritus in over half of patients. Um, and dry skin is often caused by a loss of sweat glands, which is a common problem in patients on dialysis, um, also from hot, dry environments. However, it is not the sole cause of chronic kidney disease associated pruritus. So treating dry skin will actually improve 
um, this kidney itch, but it will not resolve it completely. So it's a factor that goes into it, but it's definitely not the only cause. Again, like under dialysis, it used to be thought that high levels of phosphorus, parathyroid hormone, magnesium, and aluminum that deposited in the skin in patients on dialysis could cause kidney itch. However, recent studies have shown that this association is, is really not what we thought it was. Initial studies showed that there was an association, and most recent studies have not. So it might be a component in some people, but it's definitely not the only cause of itchy skin. Um, so there are also a lot of other causes I won't get into. I don't, I, you know, I don't, the, the upshot here, the conclusion here is that we don't fully understand what causes itching. And it's probably different to some extent for different people. And it's probably um, caused by a lot of different things. Okay. So it's important to work with your doctor to learn more about the cause of your symptoms. Okay, so besides being just a nuisance where you have to, you know, scratch, what other problems can itchy skin cause? So itchy skin has been shown to cause poor sleep quality. It's been shown, it's been linked to depression. Um, if you scratch that itchy skin too much, you can make the itching worse, like we talked about it being this vicious cycle. You can also get these complications of the itchy skin where you have, um, you know, these, these scratch marks on your arm, those scratch marks can bleed and get infected. Um, so, so really it can cause health problems besides being a nuisance and you should tell your doctor about it, which we'll get into and try to get it treated. Okay, and so this is our first poll question. Have you talked to your healthcare team about having itchy skin? And so we can take some time to, to answer that. Okay. So, you know, when I talk to patients and even when I talk to physicians about the high numbers of patients on dialysis with chronic kidney disease associated pruritus or kidney itch, often there's a little bit of a disconnect. You know, uh, physicians don't think it's really as much of a problem as it is. And patients are often kind of underreporting or not talking to their doctors about this problem. This is a, a study, again, from that big dialysis um, uh, survey, the DOPS database that I showed earlier, that shows um, what patients do or who they talk to when they're bothered by itchy skin. And based on this survey study of 114 patients on dialysis, only 26% told their nephrologist about their itchy skin. And a full one third told nobody. So patients are underreporting this. And that may be part of that disconnect that I was talking about as to why physicians don't think this is as much of a problem as it is. And so, why are patients underreporting this uh, condition? You know, why are they not telling their physicians? Why are physicians not asking about it? I think, you know, one of the major reasons is that they have a lot going on in their lives. And these reasons have been quantified with studies, qualitative studies, where they've asked patients, you know, why are you not reporting this symptom to your, your doctors? And so, and so some of the answers were that many patients do not realize that the itchy skin they are experiencing is a symptom of their kidney disease. Patients may not think to share with their healthcare team that they're experiencing itchy skin. And I think part of the reason for that is that they have so many medical problems that they don't prioritize this one or they don't think it's a priority. And they also may think that there's not a lot to be done for it, which actually has been the case for many, many, many years. So I think that's part of the reason they're underreporting. And that, you know, doctors tend to not diagnose or treat it. And that's definitely true. Doctors are not asking about it. You know, if we don't have a good treatment for something, we tend not to ask about it or to try to treat it. And so that has been the case as of, as of recently. And so you should talk with your doctor if you feel itchy skin, even if you've asked them about it before or tried treatments that have not worked in the past. 
because there are new options for treating the itchy skin and I'll get into that. Okay. Okay, and then this gets to our second poll question and I'll give you some time to answer this. How do you manage your itchy skin? Okay, so I gave you a little bit of time there. And so we, you know, we're getting answers coming in as to how, you know, patients, you know, treat this themselves. I think it's important to look at how doctors treat itchy skin. Now, this doesn't mean this is how you should treat it. This is how doctors are actually treating. And this is based on some of the studies we've done. So again, they try to increase the amount of dialysis you're getting. But again, that's only in cases where you're not getting enough, and that's pretty rare. So I, you know, that that's not going to be a good treatment for the vast majority of patients. Um, I see a lot of answers of, of is creams coming in, and and that can help. And we'll get into that. Um, they may ask you to to make changes at home to help your skin and to relieve the urge, such as special creams, which are are called emollient creams, which we'll get into. Um, they may try medications like antihistamines or other medications, which we'll get into. Uh, they may test, you, again, your calcium, phosphorus, magnesium, aluminum, parathyroid hormone levels in your blood. And if they're too high, they will try to bring those down, either by telling you to prescribe a kidney-friendly eating plan um, that limits foods with phosphorus um, and to keep those, those values within range, or they may increase your phosphorus binders. However, as we talked about, that it's, it's really unclear if that's the cause of itch in the vast majority of patients, and it may not be. It's always good to get your phosphorus down, but I would not bank on that being the only reason that you're itching. Okay, so how should we manage and prevent itchy skin? So again, you know, it's underreported, and we talked about some of the reasons why. So it's important that you talk with any member of your dialysis care team, even it can be, it can be the nurse, it can be um, um, any, any dialysis technician you're working with, it can be the nurse practitioner, talk to somebody and it'll get back to the physician um, and, you know, and they'll know what to do. You know, this is becoming more and more of an issue and there are more and more treatments. And I think as a community, we are becoming more aware of this problem and may have newer treatments for you. Um, you take any medicines as instructed. Those include your phosphorus binders. You follow that low phosphorus diet. Again, that's not going to be the whole piece, but it, it can be helpful and it's helpful for many other things. Um, and then there are simple things, simple changes you can make in your home routine. Um, you can switch to less harsh or drying soaps that are made for sensitive skin, and you can do that for your laundry detergent as well. And you can use those creams. These are, are lotions or emollient creams, and the goal of these creams is to lock the moisture into your body and to soften your skin. Um, and these are creams that have moisture in them and an oily layer which traps the moisture in your skin. And so what you do is that when you, after you take a shower, if you're doing that daily, you patch yourself dry and that's when you put on the emollient cream. And then you also put it on at another point during the day. Um, if it, if you have particularly the drying heat, you can add a humidifier, uh, to the air in your house and that may help with, um, your itchy, itchy skin. And you should avoid scratching because scratching will just compound the problem and it may make a complication like a cut or an infection. Easier said than done. It's very hard not to scratch itchy skin. Okay. And so if you've done all this and you continue to itch, that's when we start to think about medications. And so traditionally, the three major classes of medications that have been used to treat kidney itch have included antihistamines, gabapentin, and steroids. So antihistamines are the medications that are most often used to relieve symptoms of itchy skin in the dialysis unit. That, that's the IV um, diphenhydramine you might get during treatment. It also includes some over-the-counter medications for allergies, um, such as Claritin, Zyrtec, things, those are the, the, the brand names, things like that. 
Um, they do relieve symptoms of allergies as well, such as hay fever, hives, conjunctivitis, and reaction to insect bites and stings. As I said, they're widely used. However, studies have shown that they are not effective in improving chronic kidney disease associated paritis or decreasing kidney itch. And they potentially have um, dangerous side effects like drowsiness, um, over sedation, especially if you're older. So you, you may be sleepier and you may fall because of them. And if they're not effective, they should not be used for this problem. Um, gabapentin is a medication that also has a long history in treating um, chronic kidney disease associated paritis or kidney itch. It's also been used to treat neuropathy. And so we see a lot of our patients on dialysis are on this medication. It's also been used to treat partial seizures and nerve pain from shingles and restless leg syndrome. And it actually may be effective. So they, a recent large review of prior studies of this medication to treat kidney itch has shown that it has proved, improved itching compared to placebo. But the problem with it is that it has a lot of side effects. So there are higher um, levels of dizziness with it, drowsiness, sleepiness. You can see more confusion, dry mouth, vision changes, weight gain, angioedema, um, falls, and, and potentially, but rarely suicide. So there's a lot of issues with this medication. It works, but it's got side effects. Um, so, you, so, you know, if your doctor is going to prescribe it, and I think, and I think that they, you know, there is definitely a role for this medication. They should start very slow, very slow and watch you on it. And slow meaning hundred milligrams, only three times a week. And finally, steroids have been used to treat kidney itch. I, I think I saw um, a comment there about triamcinolone cream being used. You know, we talked about inflammation in your body potentially being a cause of itch. And steroids are medications that actually decrease your immune system or suppress your immune system. And so that has been the theory behind using them. And they've been used in topical, oral, and IV forms. But really, the data for using them is, is underwhelming. They, they, it does not show to really consistently decrease kidney itch. And they can have dangerous side effects, which a lot of us know in that it, it can increase your risk for infections, can increase your blood sugar. Um, you really don't want to be on steroids long term, especially for, for itchy skin. Um, and, and there's really not great evidence for using these medications for this indication. Okay, so this brings us to the new kids on the block here. And these are medications that target that opioid system that I was talking about earlier. And the FDA recently approved the first medication for treating moderate to severe itchy skin that targets that system and it, for patients on dialysis and is called diphelicephalin. So this is for patients on dialysis. And this medication can be added to your dialysis treatment at the end of your session, um, and it may improve your itching. And actually, there have been um, at least two now large studies that have shown that it does improve kidney itch, and it improves quality of life as well. Um, it, however, is not recommended yet for patients on peritoneal dialysis because the studies have only been done on hemodialysis. Um, and so it showed, these studies showed that it did improve your itch compared to placebo and again, improve your quality of life uh, and sleep. There are side effects just like gabapentin and those include a slightly higher risk of diarrhea, dizziness and falls. And so it's, it's really a conversation that you should have with your doctor about whether you're a candidate for this and whether you'd be someone in which this would be good for without too many potential side effects. Okay, so we're running at the end here of the slide. So in summary, itchy skin is medically known as chronic kidney disease associated pruritus. Um, other terms have been uremic pruritus or kidney itch. The itchy skin looks different in everyone. There's not one particular profile that characterizes someone with kidney itch or chronic kidney disease associated pruritus. So if you're itching and there's not a clear alternative cause and you're on dialysis, you should consider that itch to be CKDAP, as we call it. Um, kidney itch can be a stressful condition. Um, it's common, as I showed. 
and it can cause poor quality of life and sleep. It's not just a nuisance. Patients often do not report their itchy skin to their care team, and it's underreported. And I, I went into some of the reasons, and it's probably because patients um, don't feel like much can be done for it, or their physicians don't prioritize this condition, um, or they don't prioritize this condition over other medical problems. Um, and because of that, I think healthcare providers have also underestimated how common it is and how impactful this condition is. And this has led to under treatment. Um, treatment involves treating dry skin with that emollient cream like we talked about, talking with your healthcare team about what options may work best for you, and potentially med uh, medications. And we talked about some of the potential medications being gabapentin and a new medication, difelicephalin. Okay, so now we're at the Q&A portion. Thank you. All right, Dr. Shrazian, thank you so much for walking us through all this um, information. It was very helpful. And I know um, some members of the American Kidney Fund team have um, been sharing some links in the chat too. We've got more information on our website if anyone has additional questions about um, today's webinar. And so now we'll go into the Q&A portion. So we received some questions from all of you uh, when you registered through Zoom, and then we've seen some great questions coming in as well on the chat. Um, so just a reminder, if you wanna ask a question, just go ahead and drop it in the Q&A section um, of Zoom here, or if you're on Facebook, you can add it as a comment and we'll um, make sure to capture all of those. We'll try to get through as many as we can. All right, so our first question here, does puritis cause an itchy rash, rash or just cause the itching? Okay, so you know that's an important question. So when you're talking about kidney itch, it really shouldn't cause much in the skin. Um, it's not associated with a rash per se. If you have a rash, you probably have a primary skin condition that you should see a dermatologist for. However, if you have kidney itch and you scratch your skin and you're scratching it incessantly or, or aggressively, um, you can create scratch marks, uh, which can actually get infected. Um, you can get these little nodules, especially if you're on dialysis. Um, so you can get skin complications from the itching, but it really shouldn't cause much of a rash in and of itself. Got it. Got it. Thank you for that. All right, next question here. I noticed that the, that heat triggers more itching. Why is this? Okay, so again, you know, the profile of chronic kidney disease associated pruritus or kidney itch is it's different for everybody. Um, in some patients, yes, heat can exacerbate the problem or make it worse. I think in those settings, it might be the dry heat, potentially from the heat in your house that's drying your skin. And dry skin often co-occurs or happens together with CKDAP or kidney itch. And so if you have worse dry skin, it, it will worsen the itch. So I think that's where that connection with heat can come from. Okay, thank you. Uh, next question here, does this itching only occur in advanced stages of CKD? That's a, that's a great question. And I see um, a lot of uh, a lot of the chat comments have, have been that, you know, patients are not yet on dialysis and can their itching be from chronic kidney disease associated pruritus. So, you know, we are still doing active research into this. The answer is you can have kidney itch um, even if you're not on dialysis. We more commonly see it in more advanced stages of CKD, but some of the association studies have shown that you can get itching in earlier stages, uh, even stage three. It's less likely, but you can get it. And so we're trying to work that out. Remember, these are association studies. That It's not a ca causation study. And sometimes things can look related, but when you do a deeper dive, they're not. Um, but there has been a signal that you can have kidney itch even in, in slightly earlier stages of of chronic kidney disease. But it definitely increases as kidney disease gets worse. And to the, when you're on dialysis, the prevalence or the rates are the highest. Got it, got it, thank you. 
A question here, are itchy scalp and eyes a part of the issue? I know you kind of showed us some of the diagram of where the common areas for the itching are. So would scalp and eyes be another spot? Yeah, I mean, I uh, that's exactly right, Ryan. I it's it's really not as I said. It's there's not one particular profile of this. It can definitely include your scalp, as as we showed on those distribution profiles. Um, you know, it can it can include any part of your body. So it could be a you know part of this CKD AP uh, symptom. Okay. Scenario. Yeah. Our next question: Does diabetes also cause itching? Okay. So this is a great question. You know, I, I'm not an expert. I'm not an endocrinologist. I'm not a diabetes expert. Um, but one of the potential causes of chronic kidney disease associated pruritus or kidney itch is uh, nerve, nerve issues, nerve neuropathy, nerve pain. And so it's possible that if you're a patient with kidney disease and diabetes, um, that the nerve issues related to diabetes may may actually play a role in in your itching in kidney itch. So there is a little bit of a connection there that I can make. Okay, got it. Our next question: Does high phosphorus contribute to itching? Okay, so yeah, so this is this is probably the most common thing that has been attributed to kidney itch, and that's this um, high phosphorus question. You know, if I have a high phosphorus level, is that why I'm itching? And I think most nephrologists still think that's the sole cause of chronic kidney disease associated pruritus, and that's really been passed on through through generations in the dialysis unit through um, dietitians. Um, the answer is it's not so simple. Uh, you know, I, there there have been studies that have shown an association, but as I said, there are more recent studies that show no association. So uh, it might be a component of it, but it's definitely not the sole component. Um, it's always good to lower your phosphorus if you're on dialysis into the normal range, and I think that's something we we encourage regardless. And I think that's part of the reason that theory is so popular. But there's no evidence to say that it's the cause of chronic kidney disease associated pruritus. Um, so I, I think we should try to treat it because it's important to treat, but we shouldn't be kind of um, um, reliant on that explanation because because then we're never going to move the field f further. You know that that has been the thought for many 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 years. Kidney itch still persists in high in high rates. Um, so I, I don't want to get complacent about saying it's related to phosphorus when, when it's not. Okay, got it. We have a, a question. Um, my adult son has kidney failure and puritis for several months prior to starting dialysis a week ago. And then yesterday he mentioned that his itching has stopped. Do you think that that's likely, that it will likely start again or um, maybe it was resolved from starting the dialysis? You know, that's a very interesting question. Um, and I think that, you know, the causes of kidney itch are probably different for different people. And I think there is a subset of patients that are just starting dialysis where, as we talked about under dialysis or even, even you know, uh, things that deposit in the skin with under dialysis and not starting yet may be the cause of itching. And in this case, it sounds like it because it got cleared up potentially and now he doesn't itch. So, you know, I, I would say that it's, it's not that guaranteed that the itching will come back. It, it might've just been that he needed to start dialysis. And that in his case is what improved the itching, but that's not the case for everyone. You know, there, there are patients who've been on dialysis for years that are getting well dialyzed that still have this. That's probably the majority of patients. So in his particular case, I think that, that it might've been related to, to not being dialyzed and it's better now. And it, it may not be that it comes back. So, so that would be good. Okay. Uh, another question here related to dialysis, um, the study that you mentioned earlier in your talk, um, did the itchy skin study only include hemodialysis patients or also peritoneal dialysis patients? And, and maybe um, in your answer, if you could explain the difference between those two for 
anyone that's not yeah. Sure. So you know, hemodialysis is is basically blood dialysis where your blood gets cleaned by by the hemodialysis machine. Peritoneal dialysis is where you get your dialysis through the peritoneal membrane in your body. So that is, you put clean dialysis fluid into your abdomen and your peritoneal membrane exchanges toxins and extra fluid from your blood into that dialysis fluid in your abdomen. And that gets drained. And then you put new clean dialysis fluid in and the process starts again. So there's slightly different ways of kind of cleaning your blood when, when your kidneys have failed. Um, so that study did, did not include peritoneal dialysis patients. Um, however, there have been other studies of kidney itch in, in PD patients, as we say, patients on peritoneal dialysis, and the rates are similarly high. We're talking about 50 to 60% with kidney itch. Okay. Uh, was, was, was that, that um, person talking about the, the rates or the treatment study? It does not, it doesn't say, right? They said the itchy skin study. So. Yeah, the itchy skin. The, the treatment studies have, have only also been in patients on hemodialysis. Okay. Yeah, because right, as you mentioned, the, the medication right now that's out there is only available for hemodialysis. Right, exactly. Okay. Uh, next question here, is there a food connection to itchy skin? Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I think... There, there, all, there's all, a lot of potential explanations, um, especially when the cause is not really well known and is probably multifactorial caused by a lot of different things. What I would say is everyone has a particular profile in terms of food allergies. And so if you're allergic to a particular food and you, you're eating that food, that can definitely cause itchy skin. So the answer is that it's probably different for everybody. Um, some, some patients are, you know, allergic to, let's say strawberries or dairy or, or wheat. So those are things you should avoid, especially if, you know, if you have itchy skin. Got it. And the next question here, can gabapentin be used for a long time? Um, it can, you know, it can be used for a long time. Um, it can be used for years. You know, we, we, we have used it for years in patients with um, uh, diabetic uh, neuropathy. Um, however, you have to be careful. And so one of the situations where you have to really be careful is if you're not yet on dialysis and your kidney function is worsening, you have to decrease the dose over time because it can build up in your body. Um, it, you know, it's not very efficiently... Uh, well, it, it's removed by dialysis, but it can build up in between, let's say, if the kidneys are not working. And when it builds up, it can cause the drowsiness, the confusion, the falls, things like that. But it can be used for a long time if you're careful. Good to know. We have a, a great question here about um, talking to the different um, healthcare providers about this. So the question is, what type of updates and education may be offered to dermatology specialty? Usually a nephrologist refer to a dermatologist for itchy skin. Um, so, you know, it's variable. I would, I would, I, I would um, kind of challenge the second point a little bit that nephrologists usually refer to dermatologists for itchy skin. I would say sometimes they do, but often for pa especially for patients on dialysis, it's very hard to refer to other specialties because the wait times are very long. And so often patients on dialysis have to be managed by, by their nephrologist for, for you know, what we would consider primary care, general issues, or other subspecialty issues. And this is definitely one, because um, often, and I think they should be, nephrologists should be the primary managers of this condition, because it is common, and it's hard to refer out to dermatology. Um, that being said, you know, if they are referred out, what education could be given? I think, you know, education on really the impact and the prevalence rates. So, you know, education about how common it is, um, what it can impact. And we talked a little bit about how it impacts quality of life, sleep, depression, you know, so th that treating it is important. Um, some, some of that education can be given to dermatologists and nephrologists, I think, to, to kind of increase awareness of this problem. Got it. And I think, as you mentioned, some people may have, you know, brought this 
symptom up before with their doctor. Um, do, you, do you have anything to say about encouraging people to, to raise it again or, or how to have that conversation even with your nephrologist? That's a great point. Um, you know, uh, this condition really was defined over 50 years ago. And so there's been a lot of, you know, research over the years on it, generally kind of small research, not great research, uncontrolled trials, but there have been many things that have been tried in the past and they've really just overwhelmingly been unsuccessful until recently there have been some good trials um, with, with these medications in, in this class that, that affects the opioid system that we talked about. And so I think things have changed a little bit and now we have a new FDA approved medication and that's only been around, you know, for, for about a year. So um, it is definitely worth bringing it up again with, with your healthcare provider. Great. And then it looks like we have a question from the healthcare provider perspective too. So if any healthcare providers are listening in, the question is, what is the best way to approach patients in asking about their itching? Okay. Great question. You know, I think, um, you know, one thing there, the patients are not often very forthright about, um, this problem for the reasons we talked about, they're underreporting it. Um, so, so I think you have to kind of be aware, you know, if you, you can see potential, um, scratch marks on your patient and, and that's someone to ask a directed question. But I think the first step is to really ask directed questions about their itching. You know, in the, in the past four weeks, have you had any itching that's kind of impacted you or impacted your quality of life? And if you get an affirmative response, I think at that point, you can give one of many um, itch specific surveys that are out there. One easy one to give is a visual analog scale. Usually it's used, used for pain, but it's also been adapted for itch. And so you can have whoever in your dialysis unit administer that to, to the patients um, that, that actually say they have itching. I mean, you could screen your whole unit pretty easily with a directed question and whoever comes back positive for itch um, that's impacting them, th then you give some of these surveys too. Great, thanks for that information. Um, here's an interesting question. How do I know if the level of my itch is worth being treated? Well, I would say, you know, it, it, that's a great question because, um, it, you know, itching like pain is very subjective. So, um, it's hard to say what's a problem for someone and it is not a problem for someone else. I think, you know, um, Generally, the, the medications are approved for, for patients with moderate to severe itching. And so on a visual analog scale, that's that's like around, you know, let's say a five or six. Um, um, some patients, some people would say a four to six. But I think the real answer is, is it affecting your quality of life at all? And if it is, you know, ask yourself that question that that might be a situation where you, you should should seek treatment. That's good advice. All right. Another um, question we have here is extremely itchy skin and hard bumps common together. Okay. So there, yeah, I showed some of those pictures. There is a condition called Perigo nodularis, which actually it's, it's, um, it's not just specific to kidney itch, but it, you know, it's, it's like this, this kind of inflammatory nodule that can be under the skin in patients on dialysis. So you definitely don't always see that with CKDAP, but sometimes you do. And so occasionally those two things, perigo nodularis and, and kidney itch go together. Okay. Another question that just came in, can the lack of dialysis um, cause the itching? We kind of talked a little bit about dialysis earlier on, but would that be something for people to think about lack of dialysis? I mean, this is one of the original theories as to the cause. And so I think up to a certain point, um, you know, if you're being under dialyzed, uh, then, then bringing your dialysis level to an adequate amount that's been defined by our kidney guidelines as a KT over V of 1.2 or higher, um, that will improve potentially improve itching. And there's some old, really old studies, not great studies that have shown that. But as I've said, the vast majority of patients are actually at that level, like over 98% of patients and improve and, and, and increasing dialysis beyond that level has not been shown to improve itching. So 
for, for almost everybody, the answer is no. Increasing dialysis will not help. Okay. Um, there's a couple of questions about um, the medication that you talked about. So one is if it can be, is it administered only in in-center? Can it also be administered at home? And then also if you could just talk to, you know, how that, how it's administered. Okay. So, so as of now, it's, it's not um, administered at home. Um, and it has to be administered in the dialysis unit. Um, and it, you know, it happens at the end of dialysis uh, through, through your IV that's already there for dialysis patients. Um, and so you'd have to ask your doctor if you're a candidate and they'd go through a good kind of risk benefit analysis of the medication with you. And if you're an appropriate candidate, they, they potentially can prescribe it. And that would be the route. All right. I think we've got time for, for one last question. And then we'll go into our um, wrap up slide for everybody. Um, so the question is um, just lost it here. Okay, so I, you talked a little bit about um, recommendations for different creams and whatnot. So the question is, um, what soap do you recommend? Uh, but maybe you can talk more generally about, the, and, you know, anything about soaps or laundry detergent yeah. or, or or lotions as well. I mean, without getting into brands, I think just the ones with sensitive for sensitive skin and with moisturizer. You know, I don't know if there's um, you know, one is better than the other. There's no real data on that. But but switching to the ones that are not harsh that are for sensitive skin, basically. Okay. Great. Well, thank you so much. Thank you everybody for submitting all these wonderful questions as well. And we'll go into this um, last okay. slide here. So before um, this webinar, we asked Dr. Shirazian um, some takeaways that he wanted everyone to take away from the, his, his talk earlier. So two things to know and two things that we'd like you all to do now that you have this uh, information. So uh, Dr. Shirazian, if you could walk us through um, the two things for everyone to know from your presentation. Okay, so two things to know. So Number one, itchy skin is common for patients with chronic kidney disease and new medicine is available to treat your itch and improve your quality of life and things to do. If you're experiencing itching that's affecting your quality of life, please tell your physician, okay? And avoid scratching itchy skin. It can make the itch worse and it can damage your skin and it can get infected. So those are two things to know and two things to do. Excellent, thank you so much. And before we close, I'd like to thank everyone uh, on the call for joining us. And thank you to CSLV4 for making today's webinar possible. To stay in the loop for upcoming events, be sure to like the American Kidney Fund on Facebook and send us your email through kidneyfund.org. And lastly, please remember to complete the brief survey that we have at the end of today's event. If you're on Zoom, click continue in your browser webpage to follow the link to the survey after the webinar ends. And if you're on Facebook, the link will be posted in the chat for you. Um, thank you so much, Dr. Trazian, for joining us today on this call. And thank you all. Um, stay well. Thanks for having me.